When it comes to nutrition, I rely heavily on the research that's been published in journals and done by scientists all over the world. But just because something's been discovered in the lab does not mean that it's necessarily going to carry over into the real world. So I test it on myself and thousands of people who follow my advice. So with all that data, I'm able to sort of bring it all together into the best nutrition advice uh, that's out there. With the nutrition program for Shirk It to Shred, it's all based on macronutrients, getting enough protein to complement the recovery from the training, helps you to build more strength and muscle. That's gonna keep you also burning more body fat. In the Shortcut to Shred program, the macronutrients are ranked protein first, fat is actually second, and then carbs come in third place. Protein is the most critical macronutrient on the Shortcut to Shred program for the simple fact that muscle is made out of protein. So to build more muscle, you need more protein. Protein is also critical for energy. Amino acids that protein is broken down into are actually used by the muscles as an energy source. Plus, research shows that higher protein diets that are lower in carbohydrate actually work very well for fat loss, especially when we're trying to maintain or build lean muscle. There's a simple fact that it's very difficult for the body to take protein and then convert it into body fat. It's not impossible, but out of the three micronutrients, your body has to work much harder to take protein and convert that into body fat. It's gonna either go to build muscle or be used as energy, especially when you're eating fewer calories. So focusing on protein is a home run as far as dropping body fat and building muscle and strength. The protein sources that you want to focus on during the Shirk It to Shred program are your lean cuts of meat like top sirloin, flank steak. Those are very lean sources of beef. You can even get uh, ground beef that's 97%. Lean, anything 95% and above lean is great. Uh, obviously chicken breasts, but even chicken thighs, people think, oh, the dark meat, that's so fatty. It does have a bit more fat than a chicken breast, the white meat, but it's, it's not gonna ruin your program. It's a small amount of extra fat. Same thing with turkey or any poultry. Fish is always a great source, and we have both lean fish, like, halibut, sole, and then we have fatty fish like salmon, obviously eggs. Eggs are a very high quality protein source. And then we've also have dairy. Dairy is a very critical protein source on the Shortcut to Shred program in any of my diets because the simple fact that dairy has been shown to be critical for building muscle and it's because it's composed of the two main proteins, whey and casein, which complement each other nicely for promoting muscle growth. So how much protein do you need to consume while you're following Shortcut to Shred? Research shows that anyone who is training intensely need at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight, at least. There is research showing that going as high as one and a half grams of protein per pound of body weight was very effective for promoting muscle growth and strength gains. And that's basically what you're gonna be eating when you're following the Shortcut to Shred program. Now that's not just what's been shown to work in these research studies, that's actually what I've found with thousands and thousands and thousands of people eating these higher protein diets while following my programs. Getting in one and a half grams of protein per pound of body weight is critical, not only for growing muscle, building strength, but also helping to shed body fat while you're on the Shortcut to Shred program. Fats are ranked as the second most critical macronutrient in the Shortcut to Shred program for several reasons. Now, a lot of people are kind of surprised at the fact that you're eating so much fat. But fat is not the enemy. Just because you're eating fat doesn't mean you're gonna get fat. 
And the fats that we're gonna be focusing on are the very critical omega-3 fats. These actually have been shown to enhance fat loss. The omega-3 fats actually work in the body to turn on genes that increase fat burning, and they turn off genes that decrease fat storage. And they also produce very beneficial prostaglandins that help to decrease inflammation, which provides most of the health benefits. Plus, omega-3 fats have now been found to actually aid muscle recovery and muscle growth. Absolutely critical. Saturated fats are actually not a fat you need to avoid, especially for males. Saturated fats have been found to enhance testosterone levels. And this is gonna be critical when you're training as hard as you're gonna be training on shortcut to shred. You wanna maintain those testosterone levels. That's gonna help you build muscle and strength, train harder, and actually lose more fat. So even saturated fat is not the end. Monounsaturated fats are another healthy fat, and with the saturated fats, they've been found to promote higher testosterone levels. The omega-3 fats and monounsaturated fats have been shown to be preferentially used as an energy source, especially uh, during exercise, but also when you're just sitting around, you're mainly burning fat as your main fuel source. The only bad fat is trans fats. Those are the ones you want to avoid. These have been altered in the lab, so it provides better shelf life. This sort of tweaks the molecule, the fat, and the body really doesn't recognize what it is and doesn't really know what to do and how to process it. So it gets into your cells and causes havoc. That's why it's been found to increase the risk of heart disease and certain cancers. So there's one fat you want to avoid, it's trans fats. The problem with fats are the fact that they are calorically dense. When you look at uh, protein and carbohydrates, a gram of protein or a gram of carbs provides about four calories. Now when you look at a gram of fat, it's more than double that. It's around eight to nine, uh, depending on the fat, and even up to 10 calories per gram of fat. So people think, oh, well, that's gonna push me over my calorie limit, and it can. You do need to be uh, cautious of how much fat you're taking in, but as long as you're hitting that 0.5 grams that I have in the diet, your calories will stay in check and you'll be in that fat burning zone. Calories are an important factor, especially when trying to lose body fat, but calories really aren't the only factor here. Macronutrients are actually more critical, and as long as you have your macronutrients broken down properly, then the calories will fall into place. Good fast sources to focus on while following Shirk at the Shred program are nuts, which you can provide the monounsaturated fats, olive oil, peanut butter is a great one. When you're dining, nothing's better uh, than peanut butter, another great source of monounsaturated fats. When we talk about the essential omega-3 fats, you're gonna be focusing on fatty fish. That's one of the best sources. Salmon is a great uh, source. Also some fattier uh, cuts of tuna. If you're gonna get canned tuna, uh, actually get the white albacore instead of the chunk light. It has more of the omega-3 fats. Even sardines are a great source of omega-3 fats. And then egg yolks uh, are a great source. I actually recommend getting at least three egg yolks per day, and that's based on research showing that when subjects follow the weight training program, those who were getting three yolks actually gained almost twice as much muscle mass and strength as those not eating the yolks. And they believe that's due to the fat as well as the cholesterol content. Cholesterol is actually important. You do need some cholesterol uh, to maintain the integrity of the membranes of cells such as uh, muscle cells. So make sure you eat enough fat on this diet. Uh, especially as your carbs drop throughout the phases. Carbs provide very little benefit other than an energy source. And few people realize that out of the three macronutrients, carbohydrates are the only ones that are not essential by the body. Protein, there are essential amino acids. 
Those are amino acids your body can't build, it has to get them in your diet. Fats, there's essential fats, the omega-3 fats, omega-6 fats. These are essential, that means your body cannot produce them and it has to get it from your diet. There's no essential carbohydrate, none. You know why? Because the body can produce enough carbohydrates, mainly in the liver, from the protein and the fat that you consume. It doesn't mean the carbohydrates are a demon or anything, uh, but when you're trying to lose body fat while building muscle and strength, you want to make sure that you're getting adequate amounts of protein and fat. The two main types of carbohydrates are your high glycemic or fast digesting carbohydrates and then your low glycemic or slow digesting carbohydrates. And the reason that they're called high glycemic or low glycemic is the way that the body responds to them when you consume them. High glycemic carbs, like I said, sugars, white potatoes, when you eat them, your body processes them very rapidly. So they basically get broken down in the body and then absorbed by your intestines and get right into your bloodstream. And that raises your blood sugar levels, your blood glucose levels. They shoot up and then that spikes insulin levels. So those are your high glycemic carbs. That's not a great thing. It is at certain times like after workouts, which we'll talk about later. And then you have your low glycemic or slower digesting carbohydrates. And those are low glycemic because when you eat them, they don't get rapidly digested and absorbed. They take longer, it's a slower process, and that way your blood glucose levels, your blood sugar levels stay steadier and so do your insulin levels. So good examples of uh, low glycemic or slow digesting carbs are most fruits, whole grains, uh, and we're talking about oatmeal here, whole wheat bread, whole wheat pastas. Other good examples are sweet potatoes. When it comes to potatoes, the sweet potatoes tend to be on the more slower side or lower glycemic side, whereas your white potatoes are actually on the higher glycemic uh, side of the coin. During the workout, you're mainly burning carbohydrates as your main fuel source. And this comes from mainly the muscles. You store your carbohydrates in your muscles in the form of glycogen. As the workout proceeds, those muscles that you're using burn up more and more of that glycogen, which is your stored form of carbohydrate. After you work out, you want to replenish that glycogen so that you have energy for the next workout. And research shows that the best way to make sure you are restoring this muscle glycogen levels is to get high glycemic or fast digesting carbs. So that's why I recommend getting things like gummy bears or Blanca pixie sticks. Now, when we talk about sugars, you have the main type of sugars like table sugar, which is sucrose, called a disaccharide. It's two different sugar molecules, glucose and fructose. Out of those two, fructose is actually a slower digesting carbohydrate because it has to go to the liver and then the liver has to convert it into glucose. That's what your blood sugar is. That's what your body is going to use to store as glycogen. So the reason I recommend gummy bears and pixie sticks are they pretty much have either no fructose or very little fructose. They're mainly a source of pure glucose. It's almost like injecting glucose into your bloodstream. You digest them, they literally get absorbed by the intestines, go right into your bloodstream, and then get delivered right to your muscle, and that helps you to replenish that muscle glycogen immediately, and that's what's been shown to enhance glycogen levels, which is gonna give you more energy for that next workout. Plus, they spike insulin. Remember what I said about insulin, is that insulin is an anabolic hormone. It gets to the muscle, and it triggers a process of protein synthesis, and that's just the chemical steps that lead to building muscle protein, which leads to building muscle growth. Plus, insulin is gonna help all that glucose from those carbs and drive them right into the muscle. You're also gonna be getting 
protein shake right after you work out, you wanna make sure those amino acids get into the muscle. Insulin also helps drive those amino acids into the muscle. And this is all gonna help with better repair, better recovery, and better muscle growth. On the Shortcut to Shred program, the diet goes through three different phases. You'll be changing your carbohydrate intake based on the phase of the diet. Phase one lasts a week long. You'll be eating about 1.5 grams of carbohydrates per pound of body weight. Phase two lasts two weeks. You'll be dropping carbs down to one gram per pound of body weight. In the final phase, phase three, which will be the final three weeks of the program, you'll be dropping carbs down to just 0.5 grams of carbs per pound of body weight, or about half of your body weight. Through all three phases, your protein and fat stays the same, but your carbohydrates drop each phase, which also drops your calories. In phases one and two, your caloric intake and even your, your carbohydrate intake and, and protein intake to some degree are gonna be different on those training days versus that one, you only get one rest day because on workout days, you also have that pre and post workout meals that you're adding to the diet. That's gonna give you the extra carbs, primarily in those fast digesting carbs that you want. Post workout, it's also gonna give you a little bit of extra protein on those days. Now in phase three, on the other hand, on your rest day, you're actually gonna be getting even more calories than on your workout days. And a lot of people think, well, that doesn't make very much sense. And it does because when you're dropping your carbohydrates in that third phase, all the way down to just 0.5 grams of carbs per pound of body weight, that's a very little carbohydrate. Now, what can happen when you're eating so few carbohydrates and calories is that leptin levels can drop when you're getting in so little carbohydrates and calories. Now leptin is a critical hormone for maintaining your metabolic rate. So if leptin levels drop too low, your metabolic rate can come down. What we found is that by giving your body this high carb day, it can sort of reset your leptin levels and that keeps your metabolism burning. It also makes it a lot easier to get through the diet when you've got that day, and that just helps with, with your sanity on this program. So remember, food is just one part of the Shortcut to Shred nutrition plan. Supplements also play a critical role. So be sure to check out the supplementation video, as well as the training overview video and the workout examples. And for a full breakdown of the nutrition program, be sure to check out the page below.